My phone buzzed in my bike basket as I was chaining it to the rack in front of the ballet studio. Unknown number. A trickle of unease slid down my spine. I tapped the screen. Hello? Hello, is this Kennedy Barrington? My stomach turned, and I could feel the beat of my pulse in my neck. No, I'm sorry, you must have the wrong number. The tremble in my voice was barely audible, but I knew it was there. I just hoped the person on the other end of the line didn't hear it. I apologize for the inconvenience. I swallowed, the movement sticking as my throat had gone dry. No problem. I hit end on the screen. My hand shook as I placed the phone back into my bag. Memories assaulted me as I zipped the top closed. Memories from before I'd gotten smart, changed my last name, and got a new phone number. I grabbed my phone off the rickety table in my minuscule studio apartment. Is this Kennedy? It is. Who am I speaking with? I went back to emptying the small grocery bag. You're a murderer. Your whole family is. You'll pay. One day you'll get what's coming to you. I'll make sure of it. I dropped the phone as if I'd been burned, the screen shattering. I'd made an appointment with a lawyer the next day and slowly began the process of erasing my life. But there was something so incredibly freeing about being a blank canvas. I could decide who I wanted to be. I could try things on, pick them up and put them down. What did Kennedy Charles wear? What music did she listen to? What books did she read? What did she like to do in her free time? Who was I kidding? There was no free time. I worked myself to the bone, mostly for distraction, because as soon as I was still for too long, the guilt got louder. Most of the time, it was a low background noise, but if I got too quiet, sat with my thoughts for too long, it became a thundering drum. And now, someone who knew about the person I used to be had my number. I flashed back to earlier that morning, all of Kane's questions. Did he know the truth? 